Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Dr Rockwood is going to take you through your microscopy practical for your A-level biology. So we're going to look at how to do practical and then really, really importantly, the biological drawings, how to make sure you're picking up all the marks on the exams for your biological drawings. It is important that you are familiar with the different parts of an optical microscope. Hopefully you've used one of these in the lab at school or seen somebody use one. We have eyepiece, the base. This is going to be the light source down here. This could be a mirror or it could be a lamp if it's an electrical microscope. This large wheel here is your coarse focus. And the smaller one is your fine focus. There are some objective lenses that come here. And this bit is a wheel which you can turn to switch between the different objective lenses. This is your stage and you'll place your slide in here so that you can view it under the microscope, view it for you, the eyepieces. The slide is held in with this clip here, which you can move in and out, in and out to put the slide in place and keep it there. Optical microscopes are going to use a convex glass lens. It has a pair of lenses. It has the eyepiece and then it has the objective lenses. These will generally be four times, 10 times, 40 times, maybe a hundred times. You will need a light source coming from below so that you can actually visualize things. Otherwise it is going to be very, very hard to see anything. Let's have a look then at how we actually use these parts of the microscope to focus it. Side here, there's two focusing dials. This big one is the coarse focusing dial and the small one is the fine focusing dial. And as you move these, the stage will move up and down. The coarse focus will move it in quite big chunks, quite quickly, whereas the fine focus will move it very, very small chunks, very slowly. So when you put a slide on, you can start off by using the coarse focus to get it in, into general focus, and then the fine focus to actually focus in and see what you are looking at. When you actually want to look at the slide, you can take your slide, put it in to the clips. You can then move the slide around so that the sample you're actually wanting to look at is on top of the circle in between the, the light source and the eyepiece. You're going to want to start with your lowest objective, so the four times objective. And you're going to want to have that quite high up towards it so you can actually see what's going on. You can then look through the eyepiece, focus it, and then change it to a 10 times objective. Adjust the focus ever so slightly, change it to a 40 times objective. And I know that feels really close and adjust it so you can see what is going on. I'm going to do a much more detailed video of me actually doing this when I go through the practicals. Using optical microscopes. So we need to make sure that we're using the correct language and we also need to make sure that we can explain how to use a microscope to observe objects. So the way we increase the magnification is to turn the objective lens to a higher power. And when we talk about increasing the magnification, what we mean is in order to make the image that we're going to see through our microscope appear larger. The focus wheels are used to make the image appear less blurry, so to bring it into focus. Due to their lower resolution and magnification, light microscopes can only show certain organelles. Really, we're only able to see mitochondria, just about, and nuclei, and anything smaller than that cannot be seen. So no ribosomes and none of the other structures we've talked about already. Living cells and tissues can be viewed, so things that are alive and maybe moving around or that are functioning but they're often transparent. So most cells, like you can see the majority of the cells in this leaf image here, are transparent. 
However, there will be cells that contain pigments, like these chloroplasts that you can see inside the guard cells around the stomata here. So pigmented structures, so things like red blood cells, for example, that already have pigment in them, they will be able to see, be seen in colour, but everything else is transparent. So in order to see certain structures, we will need to use stains. Different stains will bind to different materials. It could be like the cell walls or DNA, for example. Here we can see some starch grains that have been stained with iodine, which will turn them blue-black and so that we can see them. All tissue samples that you use for a light microscope must be very thin so that we can see the light through them. The light needs to pass through from underneath and up through the objective lenses so that we can view the structures. There are two pieces of equipment we can use to actually measure structures in a microscope. The slide graticule, which is a lined ruler on a microscope slide that you place on the stage of the microscope, and the eyepiece ruler, which is actually a ruler imprinted on the lens that is in the eyepiece. The slide graticule is a calibrated measurement in the ruler. So it shows known measurements, including millimetres and micrometres, and it's actually been measured out on this slide. The eyepiece ruler is just a series of lines that has been scratched into or laid onto the eyepiece lens. So that allows you to lay this over structures you can see on the microscope, and then you can measure it as a sense of scale. So you can use this to kind of count as a scale some the number of lines that the length of an object is, and we call these lines eyepiece units, or EPU for short. So let's look at an example to see how we can use this eyepiece ruler and the slide graticule to measure something under the microscope. So here's that same image we saw earlier about the stomata on the underside of a leaf. So to find the length of the stomata, I'm going to use my eyepiece ruler, which you can see I've kind of aligned, I've twisted the eyepiece lens so it's kind of a straight line of these eyepiece units, and I've sort of laid it slightly over the top of my stomata. So I'm going to count the number of lines that make up the length or number of eyepiece units that make up the length of this stomata. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven eyepiece units. Now what I'll have done is I'll have taken away my microscope slide that had the stomata tissue, the leaf tissue on it, replaced it with my graticle slide, laid my eyepiece ruler, make sure they line up in a straight line over the ruler that's on the slide graticle, and I now need to see how many eyepiece units is the equivalent of what length on my slide graticule. So here we can see my seven eyepiece units is the equivalent of one millimetre. So the thing to remember with this is obviously that the size of the stomata is not going to change, but you can obviously view it at different magnifications. So if we increase the magnifications, I'm looking at exactly the same thing, but this time I'm using a times 20 objective instead of a times 10 objective. So I've effectively doubled the size. So my eyepiece ruler is not going to change. It's fixed, it's in the eyepiece. But what I have done is I'm using a higher power objective lens so my stomata appears larger. So I'm gonna measure it at 20 magnification as well just to prove to you that it's the same size. The stomata has not changed size. So this time, and this makes sense because I've doubled my size, of my stomata, it's now 14 eyepiece units long. When I now need to calibrate my eyepiece ruler, I'm going to need to look at my slide graticule using the same objective lens. So this time I'm looking at my slide graticule with my times 20 magnification, so my slide graticule also appears double the size. So because I looked at my stomata using times 20, I need to look at my graticule slide also through the same objective lens that I was looking at it at to measure the size. So this time my eyepiece units, my 14 eyepiece units, still line up with one millimetre. That makes sense because like we said the stomata hasn't changed size at all. So here 14 eyepiece units still measures one millimetre at times 20 magnification. So the only thing really to remember for this is that you use your eyepiece ruler to measure the length in eyepiece units or lines on your eyepiece ruler or width or whatever you need to do. And then you calibrate it using your slide graticule at the same magnification. We can use this to then work out and calibrate our eyepiece ruler. So we know now that if one millimeter is the equivalent of seven eyepiece units, 
each of these little lines is then 0.14 millimeters. So that means that also now I've done that once, I can now go away and measure multiple stomatis in my eyepiece units and just convert that way. So if it's 10 eyepiece units, it will be 1.4 millimeters and so on. So figure out and explain how you would use your eyepiece graphical to measure it. How would you convert your eyepiece units into actual measurements using the slide graticule? Maybe how you could actually calculate what one eyepiece unit was and then use that multiple times. But just remembering that you need to lay your ruler or your eyepiece unit ruler on top of your slide graticule at the same magnification as what you were using it at. And obviously, if you need to get the average length of a stomata, for example, you'd have to do this multiple times with multiple different stomata that you could see in your field of view and then calculate an average. Preparing microscope slides. So we're going to look at a basic example of making a slide with some onion tissue. But this is a very similar method, regardless of the tissue that you'd use. First of all, let's go through the hazards of this practical. So we're going to be using stains, which we need in order to be able to see structures that we're looking at under the microscope. So, for example, iodine is the main one, especially if you're using plant cells. These are all irritant or harmful chemicals, so we must wear goggles when using these at all times. If any of these substances gets on your skin at all, you should also wash your hands straight away. Some of the equipment can be considered sharp, so we could be using a mounted needle. And the slides and cover slips are glass and they can be easily broken or have chipped corners or edges. So please make sure to check that all the glass isn't chipped or broken before you start to use it. And be very careful with putting them near the edges of the bench, for example. Make sure if you're using a mounted needle, you always point it away from you. OK, let's look at the method then for preparing the slide. We're going to go through how to prepare a slide of onion cells. But if you're using other plant tissue, this will be the same. And we'll talk about the animal cell method a bit later. So the first step is to add a drop of water using a pipette to your microscope slide. This is just going to help your tissue stick to the slide. Then you will need to peel a very thin layer of onion epidermal tissue. We need the layer to be very thin because we're trying to get one cell layer so we don't have multiple layers of cells and we need the light to be able to pass through it. You're going to use forceps, so not your fingers, in order to lay it flat onto the slide. This is to make sure you don't transfer any of your own skin cells onto the slide. Then you're going to add one to two drops of iodine on top of the tissue. This will give colour to the cells and it will stain structures to make them more easily visible under the microscope. Because these cells are completely transparent, so we won't be able to see anything if we didn't use stains. And then finally, you're going to lower your cover slip, which is again a small glass piece of slide, over your sample and you're going to lower it down using a mounted needle. And this way of lowering it down means that you're being gentle, you're not touching or putting fingerprints all over the cover slip, and also it prevents us from creating any air bubbles. If you get any liquid coming out from outside of the cover slip, you can then just blot it away using a piece of tissue. Biological drawing. Rules for biological drawings. The point of this practical is to get some slides of cells that you can see down the microscope to practice our biological drawing. So the first rule is always to use a sharp pencil. No drawing should ever be done in pen. Your lines need to be continuous lines, not wispy or sketchy. I'll show you what this means in a second. You must always use a ruler for drawing your label lines and to make sure they touch the structure that you are labelling. You should never cross over your label lines. You should not draw too small. Half an A4 page is about the right size, unless you're given a box or area in the exam, in which case you should fill it. You always need to include the magnification that you use to view the structures that you drew onto your diagram. OK, so here you can see what I've drawn as an example of a bad diagram. Hopefully you can spot all the mistakes. First of all, I've got my wispy, not continuous lines around the edge. I've got my crossing over of my label lines. I've got my cell membrane line that's not been drawn with a ruler and it's not actually pointing or touching the cell membrane. And then I've got my, yeah, my wispy lines, as we said, around the outside. Also, I sort of shaded, scribbled in the nucleus to make it dark, and that's not what we want to be doing. We shouldn't shade at all. We can add maybe dot work if necessary, but we shouldn't be colouring or shading. 
So I've redrawn that diagram to follow our rules. So I've got my continuous line around the edge, not wispy. I've got some mild dot work, but I've got my nucleus, my cytoplasm, my cell membrane, all labelled with straight lines drawn with a ruler, and they're all touching what they should be. I've also included my magnification. So I must have looked at this diagram using a times 10 eyepiece lens and a times 40 objective lens. I times those together to get my total magnification of times 400. So that's what I've put on my diagram. So let's have a look at some typical or expected results from a plant and an animal cell example. So this is kind of what you'd expect to see down the microscope if you've managed to focus it correctly. And then we'll go through what we're expecting to see in drawings. This is obviously just an example. You're going to be doing this with loads of different cells and tissues. You could do it with loads of different sample slides. So this is just a basic example of what you can expect to see and draw. Here's what I would expect you to see down the microscope for the onion cells. And then if we did an animal cell example, we could have used cheek cells. So we do a similar method to the onion cells, but to get the tissue onto the slide, we would have to rub a cotton bud onto the inside of our cheek in order to remove a few cells. And then we would rub that onto the water, as I said, that we put on the pipette onto the microscope slide. And then we would add a blue stain. So you can see on my onion cells, it's that yellow brown of iodine, which has stained cell walls and the nucleus of the cells. With my blue stain for the cheek cells, we use that because obviously there was no starch in animal cells, so the iodine wouldn't really have an effect. So we use this to be able to see the cytoplasm and the nucleus and the cell membrane of the animal cells. We only need to be able to draw what you see. And I would say that you wouldn't need to draw every single cell in this onion cell field of view. I would only draw a few. So also you can only label the structures that you can see with your light microscope. And at this magnification, all we can really see is the cell wall, potentially the cell membrane, the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Exactly the same pretty much for the cheek cells, but again, we can only see the cell membrane, the cytoplasm and the nucleus. There's no cell wall with animal cells. To get this level of detail for both slides, you'll need to focus it at, at least times 200 or times 400 to be able to see this and draw exactly what you can see. Make sure you're drawing the whole cells, not fragments. So there's about one, two, three, four, five, there's about six animal cells in this field of view. The rest of the other bits you can see are probably fragments of cells, chunks of stuff that's come off with the cotton bud. That bottom left cell has been folded over. So it's actually been kind of slid. When you put the cover slip down, you can press down gently, but if you were to slide the cover slip, then you would be at danger of folding over cells and then sort of wrinkling them up. And that means they'll be less easy to see. So just make sure you're very, very gentle when you're putting the cup slip down. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. 